guys i trust you've been staying safe now the footage you just watched is alleged to be the man who would end up inviting two friends to visit him in nigeria from where they were located in dubai after which unfortunately both ladies have gone missing this is an evolving story and it is a story that is very close to home because one of the ladies is a Ghanaian. In case you, you don't know, I'm also a Ghanaian and I'm actually located in Ghana. So one of the ladies is a Ghanaian and the other is a Nigerian. But let's get back to the genesis of the whole thing. So a Ghanaian lady by name Abigail Afiba Tando has unfortunately been declared missing whilst visiting a friend in Nigeria or let me say visiting Nigeria with a friend but the whole thing starts from this so Abigail is originally alleged to be based in Dubai with her husband now take note that Abigail is married she's married to a white guy and it's alleged that Abigail has this Nigerian friend with whom she bases in Qatar with. Now, this Nigerian friend of hers is called Celine Indudim. Now, it's alleged that Abigail and Celine have been friends for about five years in Dubai. And they both have a similar business that they are running in Ghana. Well, Abigail runs a pet shop business where she sells cute puppy dogs. And allegedly, Celine Indudim also runs a similar business. So it would seem like, yeah, things are going well. Girl power, you know. They are living life, making money. It seems all good. But this is where the story begins to get shady. Because from this point, the versions of the story out there become murky now version one has it that sometime in april abigail's friend called selling indudim who is the nigerian told abigail that she's going for a cousin's wedding in nigeria and she would want abigail to escort her to the wedding and abigail obliged now it is coming out from an interview i watched of a guy who is claiming to be the brother of abigail i can't confirm but he's claiming he's the brother of abigail and he's saying that selling has been friends with his sister abigail for quite some time now to the extent that abigail have come home to ghana with selling a number of times and have even visited their family home with selling and so Abigail's family knows Selene as a friend. They've met her face to face. And Selene's family has also met Abigail face to face and knows Abigail's family. So you would expect that this is a closely knit type of friendship. It would seem far-fetched to think that one of them would want to do harm to the other. So that's the sort of friendship that existed between Abigail and Selene. Now, based on this foundation of friendship, it would seem very normal 
that selling would request that Abigail accompanies her to her cousin's wedding in Nigeria. And they left. When they got to Nigeria, it turns out that for about three weeks, Abigail wasn't reaching out to her family. And her family got concerned. They were trying to reach her. It wasn't going through. Only for them to receive a text message from Abigail's contact one day that help have been kidnapped by Andrew called police. So that is version one of the story making the rounds. Now version two has it that Abigail and her friend Selene traveled to Nigeria to meet up with this man to have a good time. Now this is the nasty side of this version where, like I said earlier, bear in mind that Abigail is married. So per this version, it's making it seem as though Abigail is a married man, a married woman, sorry, who is embarking on a trip with a friend to do a sort of hookup with another man. And unfortunately for her, it's alleged that this man turns out to be somebody who has kidnapped her. So per this version, some people are saying, well, maybe it serves her right. That's what happens if you go contrary to your wedding vows, cheating and all. But as it stands now, that second version does not seem likely because there hasn't been anything in my research on this case corroborating anything in line with that. I don't think personally, I don't think that Abigail was going on a hookup trip. That is not to say that there isn't that possibility, but so far I haven't seen anything in that regard. So we are sticking with the first version of the story because that makes more sense to me, especially because after watching the interview of her brother, he actually confirmed those details, saying that her mom didn't even want Abigail to go when Abigail told her that Selene had asked her to accompany her to Nigeria, but then they were able to convince his mom and then the mom decided that, okay, Abigail can go and that they were going for a wedding. Now, further details coming out are alleging that the wedding some way, somehow got cancelled and these two ladies were never found. Abigail had mentioned that one of the reasons why she even wants to go to Nigeria is because her puppy business also needs stock replenishment and she hears that Nigeria markets for these kind of products would allow you to get things cheaper than other markets. So she would take advantage of that trip to the wedding to Nigeria and also acquire some of these products for her shop so in effect it would be like she's killing two birds with one stone which arguably makes sense but she didn't know what lied ahead of her so as it stands now they got to nigeria and the wedding ceremony was reportedly put off but then as abigail had planned she decided to engage in other business ventures but unfortunately that was the last time anybody heard of her. Now, it is being alleged that following the cancellation of the wedding, Abigail and her friend Selin met with another friend of theirs, alleged to be called Adiani Blessing Onyinye. And she was the one who was getting married, but then the wedding was called off on the 19th of April 2024 at the Garden Heights Estate in Port Harcourt. Now, following from there, on the 27th of April, 2024, Abigail and her friend Selin are alleged to have traveled to another state in Nigeria called Abia State to meet Selin's partner about a business deal that was based on their pet-related business that they are running. So, at this point, Abigail and Selene had promised to return by 29th of April and were last spotted at a hotel called the Panyu Hotel and Resort in the Abia State. And that was the last time anyone would see them. 
So as concerns about these two ladies grew, reports started making the, 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 the waves on the internet that there is a possibility that they could have been kidnapped or something worse. Now, this was around the time that an urgent message would eventually be sent via WhatsApp from Abigail Afibe Tandor's phone, which featured a live location tag, ordering the recipient a mutual contact in Port Harcourt that the person should notify the authorities immediately. Now, in response to Abigail's distress call, the anti-kidnapping squad of the police in that state were immediately notified and advocated collaborative efforts with the Nigerian police and then the search and rescue of these two ladies started. Now, at this point, I would want to commend the Nigerian police and the anti-kidnapping squad. I think they moved very swiftly. Although as it stands now, these ladies have not yet been found. But then, at least, the mood and manner in which they swiftly organized themselves and got to work trying to find these ladies, I think is commendable, especially per the standards in some African countries when it comes to security. And off of their swift intervention in, in, in consultation with the Interpol and other security agencies, one suspect has been arrested. Now, it's alleged that the suspect is called Andrew Ameachi Ochipo, and he is alleged to be a 52-year-old British Nigerian man and is alleged to be helping the police in their investigations. So, when he was arrested, he was actually arrested by Interpol in Nigeria to aid in the investigation into the disappearance of Abigail and her friend Selin. Now, he was picked up because CCTV footage from the hotel where the three of them met revealed crucial evidence that was linking this guy, Andrew Amiachi Uchipu, to these two girls. And a search at his place also revealed crucial evidence, including the personal belongings such as the ladies' handbags, their ATM cards, and other things. So, at this point in time, it begins to seem like Andrew might be the same Andrew that it's alleged Abigail's WhatsApp message referenced as the person who has kidnapped her. And that is where the case is standing now. The last time I checked before this video, there were reports that this Andrew guy is in the grips of Interpol, but he is not being cooperative. He's refusing to speak because it's alleged that he also has some connections in the political spheres of Nigeria. And he's also trying to pull some strings, making some calls and all. And this is where sometimes it becomes dicey because it becomes a possible race against time to save these girls if they are in any trouble and it turns out this guy is the one person who must talk for them to be able to be saved and then you have all these laws playing out and it becomes critical and, and sometimes there's the temptation in some african countries that the security agencies may want to resort to some unconventional means which are just cogents per international law and are not allowed they are just underregable and that is where it is now. I chanced upon an interview with Abigail's mom and she was so devastated and I can relate. And her husband is also very devastated. He allegedly even wanted to come to Dubai, uh, come to Nigeria from Dubai himself, but he is also afraid that given that he is even white, it will be easier for him to be picked up by these corporates if he decides to set foot there. I, I don't know if that is a good thinking or not, but all in all, this is a very unfortunate thing. And the speculation, speculations are in several directions. One other speculation is that maybe it is Abigail's friend, Selim, who sets her up. Now, this is where it gets a bit controversial. 
some people are trying to just assume that because she's nigerian she's capable of doing that i don't subscribe to that thinking because there are evil people everywhere there are evil people everywhere irrespective of their country their race or their gender and so far so good nothing has pointed to the fact that there is a possibility Selen could have set up Abigail because it's even worth mentioning that Selen herself cannot also be found. So it's both Abigail and Selen who are missing. But that is not also to discount that possibility that it could be a possibility Selen is part of the whole thing. Because most often if it's a syndicated attack, it's coordinated such that the inside person who in this case could possibly be Selen per the theory out there would also play like a victim so it's 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 a, it's it's a dicey thing because if you watch the footage before the begin at the beginning of this video the man in there is alleged to be the andrew and you hear him inviting two people or inviting some ladies it's alleged that was him inviting selling and telling her to bring a big girl along now that would have seemed like a harmless request but for me i felt it was a bit weird actually because the way he specified if it's him if that is the andrew person I'm, i i don't know in any way to confirm this but it's alleged it's him and if it turns out it's him then i i think that the way he suggested that selling brings a big girl is quite weird given the fact that Abigail is married and he's talking about they spending some time going out to eat. That also is weird to me. As a married woman, why are you engaging in such practices, leaving your husband on the, the, the excuse of going for a wedding only to be planning something like this? You know, but she wasn't planning it though, to be fair. It was her friend who was being sent this message allegedly and being requested to bring a big girl so they go and eat they spend two days all in all this is what i'll say the world is changing i think that a bit of paranoia helps you stay safe some people may debate this but i'm telling you it works it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best than to hope for the best and not prepare for the worst that way, if the worst comes, you'll be caught stranded. So, for me, I would advise that be very careful of friends. And when you are crossing borders into different countries, be very careful because you may be in a peaceful country like Ghana, but sometimes, comparatively, the other country you may be going into might be a bit chaotic. The security agencies might not be that forthcoming if you need any form of rescue. And again, you being a foreigner there and a stranger there it limits you and exposes you to a lot of dangers and sometimes if you are not careful you can be set up now there are rumors that this andrew fellow is wanted by the uk government for some offenses i don't know how true that is it's an allegation and there are also suspicions that there's a possibility there could be some occultic intentions in relation to these two ladies being missing as it stands now my heart goes out to their families i pray they have the strength to go through this difficult time it's not easy having to go to bed wake up not knowing what is happening to your kid with all these circumstances surrounding your kid being missing i hope they are found i hope the corporates are brought to book but Please, let's take our safety into our own hands. For me, honestly, if I was a big girl, there's no way I'm going to Nigeria. No offense to anybody, but I believe in staying in places where I can control things and control my safety. I don't know anybody in Nigeria and I wouldn't want to be in a country where my ignorance of their terrain, ignorance of their systems and their lack of discipline and security in itself but the country's own problems exposes me to so much risk i wouldn't go that wedding can be done without me probably i'll send them whatever gifts or whatever and i would rather tell selling to get the things for me when she's coming back not that 
I'm thinking she's evil, but hey, the world is changing. We need to wake up and open our eyes. Sometimes that can save you from a lot of things. And the absence of that can make the difference between you coming back alive or you coming back in a casket. I hope these two ladies are found. Subscribe to the channel if you are here to do so. Turn on post notifications. I'm still following this case. It's a developing case. I said when there is an update, I'm going to bring it to you. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there.